Here's an interview from one of our past shows on Rock and Metal Revival. If you're interested in hearing full shows, go to our Facebook page and check out our list of affiliates for times and places where you can hear Rock and Metal Revival. That was Mike Lapon's Silent Assassins with uh, Dracul's Son from the Whore of Babylon album that just came out. And I got to say, this is one great album and got a lot of history lessons there. And on the phone, we actually got the guy behind the whole thing, Mike LaPond. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today. So, uh, Whore of Babylon, tell us a little bit how this, this project got going. This album. Well, <clears throat> yes, well, I'd say uh, somewhere around 2012, I decided that, you know, I wanted to try to do some solo albums because... Uh, people primarily knew me as a progressive metal bass player, you know, mm-hmm. because I had such success with Symphony X. But, th- you know, there was a whole other side to my uh, playing style. You know, I grew up with, uh, you know, I was a priest, maiden, Sabbath guy. Mm-hmm. And um, so I wanted to show people that side of me. And uh, that's how the uh, the project came about. <clears throat> and uh, so, I, you know, I gave it a shot. And uh, now I'm on my third album, Horror of Babylon, which uh, came out on uh, June 26th. So uh, really excited about it. Uh, it's kind of like, basically it's like classic heavy metal meets uh, world history. <laughs> the History Channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, I dig I dig the history lessons because it kind of reminds me of the Iron Maiden uh, old classic movies kind of thing that they they did for so long, you know, like Children of the Damned and all that would make you want to go see the movies, and like this album makes me want to go watch a History Channel <laughs> and learn learn some more stuff, you know. Yeah, well, you you know it's it's funny, yeah, because I uh, yeah Iron Maiden was fantastic for that they were just totally fantastic for that and a lot of people learned a lot from iron maiden including me and um for a long time you know when i was younger i didn't really care about history in school or anything and but i never knew what to write lyrics about you know i always would write riffs and i'd have these full songs of music together but i never would kind of know what to write about i i never was into really writing about like girls or partying or anything like that so Mm -hmm. um when i started to watch the history channel i kind of i got you know i kind of rediscovered history and i I really got into it and then it kind of like uh the bell kind of went off and i was like wow this this stuff would be perfect for heavy metal music because the the stories are just so epic and heavy metal music is so epic. So I, uh, I decided to uh, give it a try. And uh, so far it's been a lot of fun and uh, it's been uh, met with a lot of good praise. So I'm happy about that. I like that you use a lot of different instruments on this one. As far as, you know, every once in, you hear a little mandolin, you hear some keyboards, you hear uh you know, I love the eight-string bass that you, that's on this. You don't hear that enough, you know? Yeah, you know, um, I try to be as diverse as I can. And, um, you know, it's like as far as, like, the mandolin and the uh, and kind of folky stuff going on there, I'm, I'm really influenced um, by Blackmore's Night. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, I just love what Richie plays and, and what he does in that band. And... Um, it's had a big influence on me. So in all these three albums here and there, you see, you know, you can hear like kind of Celtic medieval kind of things going on. So mm-hmm. yeah, the mandolin definitely was influenced by uh, Blackmore's night. Um, the eight string bass, I really got into because, uh, for the last, um, I think for the last four years, I've been playing, with Ross the Boss, co-founder of Man of War. So yeah. a lot of Man of War songs are on the eight string. So I really yeah. uh, embrace that instrument, and I like I I love the I love the full sound you get out of it. So uh, and it just makes it more more fun to create all these things. You know, sometimes it's a, it's cool to take a little break from the heavy metal stuff and and do something a little experimental and fun. Mm-hmm. Now you guys put out uh, some videos for this album i saw like three or four of them so far are you got any plans for any more 
At the moment, there's no, uh, we don't have plans for any more. Uh, I, I was blown away by uh, the videos that, uh, that came out. Uh, David Havelina uh, from the UK um, just was fantastic. And yeah, he, they're really cool. All I had to do was tell him, okay, this song's about, you know, Julius Caesar. This song is, uh, you know, about Edgar Allan Poe's, you know. And he just knew exactly what to do. And, he, and the videos I was blown away by. So, And it really kind of put across what I was trying to get in, in the song. So that was really, really awesome. And, uh, you know, I'd like to, you know, at some point I'd like to do a video with the band members in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, uh, a lot of bands tune down or they drop tune or anything to tr try to sound heavy. And by picking up the guitar and jamming along with this one, I realized, hey, this is all in standard tuning and it sounds heavy. How, how'd you find yeah. it? You know, you know, a lot of bands can't do that anymore. They just, uh, without repeating themselves constantly. And this one, you, you did a really good job of uh, mixing it up, but still uh, being heavy. Yeah, you know, I, I when it comes to like tuning down and stuff, I think it just depends on the attitude, you know, of the player. Mm -hmm. A lot of bands, you know, a lot of bands that like go to drop D. Yeah, yeah. You'll find that the whole album, every key is drop D. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just kind of like it kind of starts to sound monotone and and some you know sometimes when it's tuned too low. It gets a little muddy, you mm. know, but, you know, you've got that standard tuning. It, the sound is nice and crisp. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, if you put you put the attitude in it, and you know, it will sound heavy. And um, I think classic heavy metal is, you know, should definitely be played in uh, standard tuning. Oh, yeah. Now, you've got a lot of different colors in this album as far as, like, uh, thrash you got classic metal, you got some Baroque stuff and some acoustic stuff, and even the song Champion, which, being a metalhead, usually I hear something like that, the beginning of that, and I just fast forward through it. But but <laughs> yeah. not, this one, luckily I didn't, because it's got an amazing bass solo in it. And it's like, you did you do that on purpose? Well, you know, I'm, I, you know I have to admit, I, I love ballads. You know, um, and I think, you know, a ballad is cool on an album because it just kind of like it breaks things up a little bit, gives mm -hmm. you a little break, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you're going to be your head's banging like a lunatic for the first <laughs> half of the album. And, and now you can just kind of take a break and mm -hmm. chill out. Um, but um, Champion, I kind of uh, modeled it after um, the canon in D major. Okay, I know. By that Pasha Bell. And um kinda has the same kind of chord changes as that classical piece. And um, you know, it was just just kinda I had it I had this song for a long time. It got modified from time to time. But um it was really cool and you know, after I gave it to my singer Alan, he said, uh, you know, this might sound good with a female. So I had never thought about it and I said, Hey, you know, let's go for it. Let's try it and um I uh, called upon a good friend of mine, Sarah Teets. She lives in Pennsylvania, and she's mm. in a band called uh, Mind Maze. Really, really cool uh, metal progressive band. Mm. And um, she came down, and and you know, as it turns out, she plays flute. So I was like, "Hey, let's put some flute in there too. Why not?" Heck you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, and it just turned out really cool. A nice, you know, big, big sweeping kind of chorus, and. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I knew some people would love it. Maybe some people would think it's a little, you know, on the on the weak side. But it was just mm. something that I wanted to do, and uh, you know, it, it, for me, for me, it was fun. Yeah, it's a great melodic, a lot of melody. It's just, yeah, it's a really good tune. And uh, yeah. another one I love is Ironborn. You give a little nod to Game of Thrones. I'm taking it there. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not the. Uh, I'm not the Game of Thrones Thrones guy that has seen every single episode and is, you know, a, a okay. super geek. Um, but I saw enough episodes where I was like, wow, this is cool. And that word Ironborn really, 
mm-hmm. just stuck in my head. And immediately, um, I was hearing something with that. So, oh. you know, I tried to watch a bunch of episodes and, and whatever I couldn't figure out, I kind of just went online to fill, to fill in the gaps. And, um, hmm. it came out really, really, you know, really cool sounding, real epic sounding. I wanted it to, I kind of wanted, I was looking for that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I was definitely proud of that one. It has the big drop in the middle, like kind of like Judas Priest uh, kind of groove. I love that. I love that part. <laughs> so cool. Yes. So it's like, you know, I, uh, you know, it's then you just try to, you try to keep people on their toes. You throw mm-hmm. different things at them. And, uh, and that's what kind of makes it fun. Yeah, because there's a, l- a lot of timing changes and stuff that go on in pretty much every song. So it kind of, yeah, it keeps you on your toes. You're not just beat over the head with the same riff over and over and over <laughs> right. while they right. just sing different words over it, you know. And, right, I hear you. And, uh, like, now, you didn't even have a drummer on this. How did that work? Well, when I um, when I started with my first, uh, with my first solo album in 2014, uh, you know, my guitar player from Symphony X, Michael Romeo, mm-hmm. um, this guy is not only a ridiculously great guitar player, but he's an amazing engineer, he's an amazing orchestrator, and he's an amazing drum programmer. <laughs> so yeah. I told him, I was like, yeah, I want to do this project. He says, yeah, I'll help you. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, I got to get a drummer. And he's like, listen, I could program the drums it'll be, it'll take less time and no one will even know. No, I you said, don't. okay. <laughs> so nice. he, 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 uh, he, he programmed the drums and I, I can't even begin to tell you how many drummers he fooled. You know, they were asking, yeah. wow, who played drums? This sounds good. So, um, you know, uh, we, we kept, you know, we kept everything in house and as tight as we can with, with as less people as we can. And I guess <clears throat> in the end, it just makes things, run more efficiently but you know as sooner or later i'd like to get like a, a live drummer and uh do it for real so we'll see oh cool now uh is there any chance for a uh, mike lepon's uh signature bass at any time <sighs> yeah i mean that would be really cool um i've i've never gotten an offer for that uh but it would be something that i would love to do it'd be great to like work on you know, trying to uh, trying to put a bass together that really would yeah. have specs that I love and all that, and uh, who knows? Maybe in the, maybe in the future it would be uh, something cool to do if someone was uh, kind enough to offer that to me. Yeah. Do you got a favorite bass you're using now? Well, I have an endorsement with uh, a company called Caparison. Okay, and they Heard make uh, guitars and basses. <clears throat> They're not very well known, but it's good quality handmade instruments. Um, they, their office is in the UK, and um, they make the bases in Japan. Um, hmm. So I have a few of those bases, and um, you know they they growl. They sound great. Hmm. They you know they're nice and they cut through the mix real well. They nice. sound great. So um, you know I'm really happy with it, and. You know, hopefully, uh, maybe one day they'll make an eight-string bass. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so with all the downtime you've, we've all been having <laughs> yeah. since this all started uh, with the pandemic stuff, um, yeah. what have you been doing to keep yourself busy besides promoting this album? And you, Are right. you working on number four, the fourth one? <laughs> <laughs> Watching well, History yeah. Channel and <laughs> taking notes. Well, you know. Well, here's what I've been doing. Uh, I've been eating. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so that yeah. stinks. But um, but it's funny you say that because with all the downtime, you know, it could be really depressing. Mm-hmm. You, you you don't even want to turn on the TV. Yeah. Um, uh, so honestly, I did write an entire fourth record. <laughs> and, nice. and so, um, so at least I know when you know when it when uh, the time is right to start recording it. I have the songs, then they're ready to go. So I, you know, I try to keep uh, busy as much as I can, and you know, you try to try to stay in a positive mood. What's going on with uh, Symphony X these days? Being that you're working on all this stuff, do they get jealous that you're using all these cool riffs on 
on your stuff now? 